So guys, I had a conversation over there with the so-called uh, two Calgarian women from Calgary. Um, they're trying to normalize the uh, conversations uh, into less uh, psychological warfare. They're not. It's still the same thing. But it's more human. About 50% more human. You still get the uh, 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 and the goofy and uh, and the uh, being, yeah, both talking at the same time, cutting you off. Same tactics being implemented, but um, they sound more human than before. The conversation there is a a a, a, a somewhat of a uh, um, how do I explain it? Uh, there's more sugar coating to the dump in the middle. There's a lot more sugar coating to it than before. Or I would say it has about six, seven layers of different kind of sugar. Orange flavored, strawberry flavored, and then you get the dump, which is in the middle. So the robotica in the conversation ha is being more sugar coated to uh, masquerade it more as if it's a normal conversation. It's still two people set up there, sent out with the instructions on the phone he's gonna walk up to you and ask you for a smoke, give him one or give him two and implement these kind of uh, this kind of information in your conversation mention about Calgary that it's this and that and mention this and mention that or if he asks you this, answer that so it all depends on how they can spin the conversation and what they could talk to you about um, this is a huge effort being done to keep on inserting the element of fear that this is being done worldwide now. Anywhere you go, you're going to get the same thing. You're not getting away from it. Still tapping on that vein of other places. Meanwhile, for me, I completely forgot about the other place. It doesn't exist anymore, but the enemy needs to tap on that because it's an element of huge extra fear saying <clears throat> it's worldwide now. The whole planet's a prison for you. You ain't going anywhere. It's kind of like uh, increasing the uh, threat of fear by multiplying it by 500 percent so she can feel scared you gotta remember when you deal with a bully everything a bully taps on too much with words is mostly using them to scare you not that he's not capable of doing things to you not that he's not capable of doing it in other countries or he hasn't done it in other places but you have to ask yourself this question why does he have the need to keep on mentioning it to me over and over again why does he have the need to keep on repeating that if you travel this guy see this is supposed to also be a some kind of a sexual depravity uh, kind of a attack on it for you to crave it something you're deprived from which is something I got over fuck a month ago two months ago but sorry to go off subject the implementation of a worldwide fear of anywhere you go meanwhile the enemy knows about two weeks ago, or even the last week mostly, that I ain't going anywhere. I'm going to do it here. So he has no reason to keep on implementing these things and keep on reminding me that worldwide it's going to be like that. In this country, it's going to be like that. You ain't going anywhere. When he knows for 100%, I've already mentioned that I ain't going anywhere. Why fear? To insert those elements of fear in you that it's worldwide right now, wherever you're going to go, you're going to experience this. Well, if I still wanted to do it, 
I could understand why he would want to implement it. But I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I'm staying here. This is where the battle's going to be. And this is where I'm going to beat him. Because the reason why he's capitalizing on this now is because if I stay here, it's the worst thing that can happen to this enemy. This is a worldwide network that was not built too much over the last 20 years because I didn't show interest in traveling to the majority of the places that were sort of tapped in the last year since I've woken up. Now, what's the worst thing that can happen to this enemy? Is if I don't bite the bait and travel, if I stay here and beat him here, it's, it's, a, it's, it's mocking him, it's mopping the floor with him. Why? Because he went out of his way in the last year to really set this up everywhere. And imagine where I am right here. I take out the microchips from my eyes and then all the setup would go for nothing. These two women I just talked to right now, if I didn't have the microchip, they wouldn't have known that someone's gonna approach them that's wearing this, that's like that, and what they're supposed to say to him and how to treat him. They wouldn't know anything about that. I would have walked by them, they would have acted normal, and they would have still waited and looked around for this guy that's gonna show up that they're gonna feel. Because they put something in them that feels senses your microchip. When you look at them, they have to start moving and they have to feel that vibration. Whatever, not necessarily to start moving, but whatever they're told to do when you show up, that's how they know it's you. They sense you through this technology, which connects people together, but through technology, through my microchip and whatever they put in them. So, if I'm here, and if I stay here in Canada, and if I take home the microchip here, guys, once the microchips are out, you will not get this kind of treatment. You will not get this kind of acting because what connects me to them is the technology. Once I take out the technology from my body, then there's no contact between me and them anymore. It'll be like just two normal people that you met for the first time, the way it's supposed to be. But because I'm microchipped and my microchip is leading all the way there, they're expecting it. They're put there for a reason in that area. So when I come out tonight, in case I go and ask them for a smoke or they say that. So from now I'm going to record more for you, even the conversations. So you can cipher from the information they're saying to me what kind of psychological warfare they're trying to pull on me. And how it's all regulated. How I'm not actually meeting normal people and having normal conversations with them. How they're already set up, they're waiting for me to come up to them to ask them for a cigarette. And in case I bite the bait and I stay and I have the conversation with them, not only I don't enjoy my cigarette because I'm listening to them talk and laugh the whole time, but also to implement the necessary information in order for me to send some kind of fear or whatever implementation they want to implement. You get it? So for them, these two said, oh, then, oh yeah, in Alberta and Calgary, there's more, it's more connected, you know? It's more like a town, people say hi or whatever. But those are the things I always used to mention in my life before, that I want it. It's not because it's Toronto or Calgary. It's because I was microchipped. I never had that contact. You can have that contact anywhere. You can have that contact in the worst place. That's how life is. But the fact that I was deprived from it because of the microchip, they get them to say things like that. So the enemy still doesn't realize. He's not listening to me. He's not reading well anymore. I think he got microchipped too. He's becoming blind. He's got to take off those curtains from in front of his face because he's still delusional about who he's dealing with. He doesn't know that those things don't work anymore. He can threaten me all he wants. He can go create an island on the moon and put people there that move with microchips. I will kick his fucking ass right here in Toronto. 
by removing the microchips from my eyes in Toronto. I ain't going nowhere. I promised him that. I am not a runner. I won't run away. I will stay here, fight, and win the fight here. He could do this worldwide. Because when I win the fight here, then I can go anywhere I want. And this will be non-existent. It is all about removing that microchip, which activates all of this. Without the microchip, none of this will work. Guys, I spent four days in a row at Sunnybrook Hospital. Four days. Or maybe five. I don't know. I started at the beginning of the week. It's Friday today, August the 15th. Today, two security guards came up to me and gave me a letter of trespassing. They want to kick me out of the hospital. So I'm like, why? What did I do? They're like, oh, you filmed some videos on YouTube. I'm thinking to myself, first of all, how did you know? How did you get to them? And how did you know it was me? So I will make you listen to the video. I'm going to attach it to this video in the end. I recorded it today, the conversation with the security guards. They're fake. This microchip, everywhere I go, things get flipped. It attracts all these people in there. The real people come out of there. And they don't like me hanging out there every day because they can only convince Sunnybrook Hospital for a short period of time for the real people not to come to work. It's been evacuated for the whole week from August 10th to August 15th. Not one soul that works at Sunnybrook Hospital showed up there because I've been going there every day because I want to see an ophthalmologist. I go to the <clears throat> emergency department. I go upstairs. I haven't recorded much for you guys inside because they're not letting me. Because if I record for you inside the hospital, you'll see that there are no real doctors, no real nurses, and no real patients. They're not allowing me. They're threatening me as soon as I walk in with posters and security is giving me a dirty look the whole time. Even if I lift up the small camera. So, I'm going to upload this video right now. I'm going to attach for you at the end of this video, which will be right away. The clip that I, the conversation that I had with the security, sorry, you couldn't see any video because I had to hide the camera in my hand, the small camera. But you can listen to the conversation, me telling them, why are you giving me this letter of trespassing? What have I done? So they're trying to get rid of me because if I keep hanging out at Sunnybrook Hospital every day for a month, I will end up meeting the real people there. They can't keep them out of there for a long time. With excuses of code, I don't know, color what, or a drill, or we're training students, or they tell the doctors, you don't have any patients for this week, you don't have to come in, or this doctor's got, been given a vacation, paid vacation from the hospital for three weeks in Jamaica. I don't know what excuses they give them. But Sunnybrook Hospital, guys, from August the 10th, 2019, till August the 15th, 2019, not one soul worked there that actually works in there. It was all whatever charade they put in there and tell them. Students, training, I don't know what they're telling them. And I moved around the neighborhood today and I showed you all the houses in that area, how they're empty. Please watch the video before or after this one. I'm going to upload it tonight too. But lately I haven't been recording the conversations on the small camera. Sorry, it's my bad. I'm going to start doing that again. Next week, I'm going to give you guys tons of information about everything that's been happening behind the scenes that I haven't been recording. The reason why is I'm trying to conserve my energy so I can use it because I have a constant attack on me everywhere I go. You know how, with the stalking and the harassment. That drains your energy. So I'm trying to conserve it as much as I can in order for me to <clears throat> be able to come out of this. All right? So... I'm going to do some hardcore recording next week. At the end of the month, I'm going to get some money. I'm going to buy another four small cameras. They're going to be everywhere. I'm going to show you guys what happens behind me, in front of me, beside me. I'm going to tie them to myself. How these people wait for me behind me. As soon as I turn, they start moving. This is the only way to capture that for you. is to have a small camera attached to me from the back. So you see my surroundings, how they're artificial. How there's people there being set up to kind of exactly like the Schumann show, guys. But in a real-life version where to keep someone entrapped into a, uh, a ritualistic, battery, energy-draining uh, environment that masquerades itself as real life. It's a prison for someone not to be able to come out of. 
you get microchipped in the eyes, you go into this underground world where you meet everybody prepped to do to you what they want them to do to you. You're controlled, you're dominated by this entity that sees through you and can listen to what you say and can hear what you hear because the microchips are inserted into your optical nerve, which is the nerve that transfers the images you see to your brain, vice versa, and your hearing and everything. So basically, I have a video camera and a speaker inside of me that this entity can hear and listen to. All right? And they know everything that you do, and even the people you look at, they threaten them because they could see them talking to you. They can't even show any kind of, you know, break character or anything like that. So I'm going to upload it for you, this one and the other ones. I'm going to start doing that. I haven't been doing that for a while. I've just been uploading normal videos because I got tired of it. But I have to do that this week to show you guys what kind of a huge conspiracy is around me and how I'm being kicked out of places in a weird way when I spend there a couple of days in order, you know, for the fake to come out and the real to come in. crack his knuckles but you gotta listen to that small stuff that everyone I meet what they say and what they act like and what they do it's easy implementation of noise implementation of motion and psychological warfare through conversations whatever they are you're gonna notice next week when I record for you a lot of the conversations I'm gonna have that they're the nature of it is to be more human and less artificial that's robotic, not to prove that there's microchips connecting us. That's the main thing that they're afraid of. You know what I mean? Because if they're too artificial, then it proves that the microchip connects us. But it's okay. It's, it's, it's a next level sort of getting closer to coming out of this prison. They're trying to normalize it as much as possible because of my advances in the YouTube videos. And again, carts and everything, and it stinks in here in this floor. I don't know what they did here today to give me that bad smell, so I get disoriented. Anyways, I'll upload this right now, guys. Being accused of things here that I haven't done, first of all. Second, I'm being issued a trespass because of why? I trespassed? Uh, well, because, no, you haven't trespassed yet. Uh, but we're telling you that you're not welcome here unless you have an appointment. Why? Well, it's my job as the hospital's agent to do that. But I've why? Been... What did I do to break any guidelines or to do anything wrong? Well. I want to let you know that you're only welcome in a merge today. You can't keep walking I understand around. that yeah. perfectly, but I want to know why. What's the reason this was done to me? So the hospital wants to talk with you about that further, but you have to make a phone call and discuss it. Yeah. Right now I have to issue this. My boss told me to. So there's no reason then why I was given this? Uh, well, it's because you're not welcome here anymore. But why? Because it's the hospital's right. I, I understand that yeah. completely. I'm not arguing with right. you, but what's the reason this was issued to me? What have I done? Well, earlier there was allegations that you've been recording on the property and uh, posting to YouTube. So that was brought to me. That's why I first came to you. And that and now you went to emergency, but I find you out here again. So I'm letting you know that you no longer have business on the hospital property except for your emergency appointment. But then again, the reason why this was done to me is because I have some videos that I record and they're on YouTube. That's the reason why I'm being issued a trespass. Correct. You can't, you can't, you can't make videos on private property and then post them on YouTube without consent from what, public relations? Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's that's a prohibited why. activity on private yeah. property. Well, I didn't know that. Property. If that's yeah. fine, then I'll, I'll won't do it. I'll take it down, it's no biggie. Okay. Yeah, but I have then, no problem cool, with that's that. fine, that's fine. We still have to issue this, mm -hmm. and as soon as you take care of that, and you make those calls, and you delete those videos and all that stuff, this will probably be revoked. No problem, okay. no problem. But for now, just so we can get an understanding yeah, yeah. of what's going on, yeah. because I'm shocked. Why am I being approached yeah. by 
three security guards everywhere yeah. I go and you know it's because we just needed to stop so once you've done what we said take it down and all that call the hospital and let them know I'm sure they'll be fine no problem okay. we'll fix well, it yeah right. at least now we have an understanding of what's yeah. going on here oh, sounds good yeah. Yeah. I just gotta sure give just give me the numbers to call these yeah. guys and the office of patient experience right man so this Office of the patient experience. Okay. And I call these guys up. Do I ask to speak to anybody or no? What do they say, Mark? Not 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 anybody specific. You can talk to anybody in that department. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good, no problem. Sure. Yeah, you just need to pick up the stuff and I will, I'll do it right away tomorrow, first thing. Sure. I didn't know why this was it's happening, at least now I know. A lot of people don't know that it's yeah, you gotta get them a white copy. The white copy. Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't know that Tim Owens is a hospital that anybody can come to It's public access, but it's still private property. Yeah. I mean, no, like, thanks for yeah. letting me know. Now at so, least I know what's going on and what I did wrong and how we can fix it so yeah. I can keep coming here if I need to. For sure. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, you, can, you, can, you can always come here for any appointments and any anything medically wrong with you. Like if you have a heart attack and they, they can still bring you here. There's nothing wrong that you can always come here for medical attention. But if you start you might not refer to any of the clinics here. If this kind of stuff continues, that's all they're the, saying. The oh, other, yeah. Okay. But yeah, now I know. That's fine. No biggie. No biggie. Now I know what the problem is. At least. The yeah. other thing, when you go to your appointment, is if the security see you around the property, like outside, not walking around. If you're not at your appointment, you can be arrested. But so that's if I don't solve this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, I'm gonna solve this. Yeah, that's right, not gonna right, happen. Awesome. This is gonna be done tomorrow. Okay. So. All yeah. right, guys. So I'm gonna go to the emergency now. Excellent. Okay. Sounds good. good yeah. Thank you. Very much. All right. to get out of here to record before we get arrested for something we didn't do. So, as this fake world that was created for me is crumbling down they don't want me to go in the hospital so I can show you guys how fake it is how there are no patients there are no secretaries no nurses real doctors are not here um, what they did is they issued me a trespass notice the security for having a video up on YouTube showing how fake this is. So now, I'd have to call them on Monday and take out the YouTube video. This is the trespass notice. Why was I issued a trespass notice for just coming to the hospital? I don't know. So basically, a ritual is legal and they could pretty much <sighs> use the hospital to do a ritual on someone but you're not allowed to record the ritual that's pretty much it so basically uh, the people that rent out the hospital do perform the ritual because they're the ones renting it out they make the rules which is very understanding it's perfectly understandable so in light of this new development we are going to play this smarter how do we do that but see the thing is they cannot and I repeat they cannot 
rent it out for such a long time. So they're gonna have any excuse, any excuse to, you know, sort of, let's look that way, it's nicer. They're gonna have any excuse to kick me out of there so I don't show up there every day. So the guy said, you can come to the Emerge or you can come to an appointment, but look how windy it's getting now over there. Look at the leaves. It's boiling out there. It's the middle of August for God's sakes because I'm not looking over there. See, look, nobody's moving. Nobody's moving now, look. I'm gonna show you that when I look at them, they're all gonna move, watch. Nobody's moving now, right? Watch, 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 look. So anyways, because they have to evacuate the whole area and evacuate the hospital at the time they want to perform this ritual. So they got the security to serve me a trespass notice so I'm not allowed in there. Why? Because if I record on camera for you guys all the areas and there are no doctors in there, there are no doctors. There are no real patients, there are nobody. So, they want me to take down the videos that I uploaded for you on YouTube about Sunnybrook. They want that out of there for me to be allowed to walk into this hospital again. Unless I go to the Emerge or... or so, they by issue me this trespass notice, next time they want to arrest me. Wouldn't they love that? Wouldn't they love to arrest me? Anything to arrest me. So, we're winning. We're kicking some ass. The ritual doesn't work anymore. Uh, they end up using their own energy for nothing. It's pathetic. Um, and I'm pretty much ripping them in half. So they're, they're pissed off. And But then again, they're the ones who rent out that place. They have a right to make the rules there, you know? So we'll take them down. We'll take the videos down. We'll call them up on Monday. We'll say we didn't know. And we didn't. I didn't know. That recording is not... Um, is illegal. Because it's private property. I, I thought it was, you know, just a hospital. It's a government property. But anyways, I'll, I'll get them out of there. No biggie. We'll get the videos out of there. We won't record anymore inside the hospital. But we will still go there every day in order to be able to find the ophthalmologists the real doctors because there are no real doctors and there are no real nurses no real nothing all they have is a bunch of students that barely know how to write a prescription and a bunch of fake uh, as you see in the bus here uh, patients that want to perform a ritual on someone and drain him of his energy so basically, that's a sign to show me who the real king is. And I'm happy with that. So guys, I'm not going to record anymore. I'll see you home. Hey guys, I'm in the neighborhood by Sunnybrook Hospital. As you can see, it's evacuated. There's not a soul here. Not even people to take their place and go into their place i've been walking around this whole area there's not a soul in this place a soul it's about 4 30 now in the afternoon really really nice place <sighs> the kind of places that i should have known people that lived in if i wasn't imprisoned in this freemasonic uh prison in plain sight that they made the movie the Truman Show off it and a whole bunch of other movies um, the residents in this area completely gone all of them there's nobody here look around it's kind of like a evacuated town uh, after a I don't know some kind of huge problem in the area and you see these guys where you go, everywhere I go, who knows what they do from these vans. So if you got creatures like this guy walking around in here that don't even belong in this area. I'm going to show you how it's all evacuated, everything, look. It's dead town. Nobody. Nobody, nobody, not a soul in this whole neighborhood.
because I wasn't expected to come out here. You know, I was just in the hospital, in Sunnybrook Hospital. This is the neighborhood behind it. I don't know what it's called. Completely evacuated. Today is August the uh, 15th, I believe. You see a bunch of dogs on leashes over there. There are people that set up shop in this area to come out when I cl get close by because of my microchip. That's what the huge quantity of dogs on leashes mean. You know, I'm on a leash, I'm microchipped. It's an understatement. So there's nobody here. You're completely evacuated. Nobody. Not a creature. You can see how dead it is. Just a bunch of these uh, placed people running around with the dogs. That's about it. Completely evacuated neighborhood. There's no one here, guys. Nobody. Nobody. Look. Not a soul. So the address here is... Um, 20 Burke Brook Place Townhouses 6 to 10, 7, 17, 22, so on and so forth. Burke Brook Place, it's on Bayview and just south of Lawrence, close to Bayview in Eglinton, I guess. Really, really nice place. Uh, should have been there's a chopper over there. So basically, they evacuated everybody out of here. Every time I come to Sunnybrook Hospital, this whole bubble area needs to be evacuated. In case I run here quickly. Hmm. Planes and choppers, you guys know the deal. So I'm coming to Sunnybrook every day in order to see a real ophthalmologist so they can take out the microchips from my eyes. And they're giving me the runaround from the emergency room to the ophthalmologist's offices where you don't see a doctor come out. It's just a charade. There's no doctors in there. A bunch of people sitting in there pretending to be uh, what you might call it, uh, patients and a um, bunch of uh, what, what you might call it, uh, 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 wannabe secretaries. That's it, there's no one here. Look, it's evacuated completely, completely, completely. Nothing, not a soul in this whole neighborhood. And the usual cars coming in and out to bother me. You see them. As soon as I come out, they come in. There was no one in there the whole time. That's it. Nobody, guys. Nobody. Nobody. They didn't expect me to come in here. So now that I come here, they came and prepped to do their Truman Show thing. When I get there, they come out of the cars and everything. But overall, <laughs> look what we get to. <clears throat> overall, the whole area has been evacuated. Either evacuated or people forced inside their homes. I don't know how they do this. I really don't. But wherever the microchip heads, it attracts all this with it. And it pushes away everything that is not in on it. So, this is where we stand. The war behind the scenes on me, economically... Um, it's going on to kick me out of the apartment is going on and we get the usuals that were stopped down there and walk up towards me as I walk down look at the homes nobody in here nobody completely evacuated the whole area look at the group of zombies coming towards me microchip zombies uh, this is it so they've employed a lot of people from all over Canada. They even brought them into Toronto to do this in order to keep creating this sort of fake uh, Truman Show life for me, even though I woke up. As you can see, the two bonding over there as they come, they're smiling and talking and the same, the same thing, same Truman Show thing. It follows me everywhere I go, everywhere, everywhere. They're getting people from all over the place to keep me in this Freemasonic Illuminati prison that was constructed in 1975 when I was born as an orphan, given to their Freemasonic members, which is my fake mother, brother. Look at this row of cars piled up here now. And this is it. Look, the whole area, guys. There's not a soul in those buildings, all evacuated. Not a soul. Look at the area. Look how quiet it is. 
nothing there's nothing here even in those houses back there you'll see nothing in there so they brought in their usual you know teasing as I approach the women that they think they're so-called my type with kids and you know the bicycles everyone is smiling that fake smile on their face you know more the Truman show fake smile um, that's it so I'm coming to Sunnybrook Hospital every day to try and you know now the security today gave me a hard time in there they want me out of there they're tr they're starting to take the necessary measures to uh, get me out of there so I won't be able to come there every day this is kids rehabilitation hospital so this is a huge compound here around Sunnybrook Hospital where all of it has to be evacuated unfortunately it's not what I want but that's what they do wherever I go they evacuate it from real people and they're doing the impossible to keep this prison going and going and going for me in order to squeeze me into a corner and you know scare me and get me out of the city because they've used up everyone they can here over the la over the course of the last year since I've woken up because before that I didn't really do much I was mostly at home you know on drugs that they actually uh, and work their way to get me into them uh, to be completely dismantled and high and, and just out of this world guys I've escaped this world the reason why this charade went on for 22 years after I got microchipped was because two years after in 19 no 2000 to be exact you know they got me they hooked me up on pills Percocets they're opioids, you know, they're pretty much painkillers, they're heroin, it's a form of heroin. Then as I got older, I got on, into a stronger ones, obviously, because your body gets used to them. Then you would want to do, um, uh, you need uh, a higher amount to keep you going. So, look, look, these signs here, you know, no smoking in a place where it shouldn't be. What the hell is a no smoking sign doing here? So bicycles at the back of cars. The same Truman Show style setup everywhere I go is like that. So what these guys did is, since they've had a year to stress me out a lot with a lot of people, a lot of noise in my building, construction, work, everything, I couldn't think. A huge war was waged on me from all angles to keep me stressed so I don't think because I could have left the country back then, went somewhere else where it wasn't set up yet. And now that I think about it, I didn't make a mistake, even if I didn't leave, regardless of all the noise and everything they've done, because I knew what I was doing. The idea is not to run away from this, because it will precede you everywhere you go. They have too much power everywhere else you go in the world, because it happened to me in my past life, and in the last 22 years. All the countries that I've been to, they preceded me there because they were able to tap my internet obviously they could see through my eyes with the microchip it's that it's inserted into my optical nerve they can hear what you say hear what you hear so everything i search they know even my internet was stopped obviously everything and they preceded me to those places when i woke up they realized now he knows he's gonna go places where he's not gonna tell us where he's going so they forced me in here with a lot of noise and you know sort of squeezed me hard so they can run around at least set up the airports all over the world because I'd get to an airport I see something completely different than what I'm used to which is this fake world that was created for me and stalking and harassment on the street and provocations in establishments to keep me tense to keep me occupied with something else but I don't regret doing that to be honest with you I know what I'm doing because in the end you gotta remember no matter how much they're controlling your environment, you have control. The microchip is in your eyes, not theirs. You know what I mean? You gotta remember that. It's not gonna take forever for you to find the doctor to take it out for you. So no matter what they do, you gotta remember that as we move forward, mathematically, the odds move to your favor as you move forward and forward and forward, not to theirs. Because since my awakening, see, they're watering the plants over there, pure Truman Show style. 
So, as I move forward, the odds work in my favor. More people will know about it. More and more and more and more. And they'll have to cap more and more and more. But they're going to keep going on this war on me. And it's going to get tighter and tighter until people find out about it. Or they have to stop doing it. They're forced to stop doing it. It's not going to take much longer. I know exactly what to do now. So I'm in the process. I mean, it's summertime. It's August. They can close up the hospital for a month. They've obviously expected me to come to the hospital because that's the time I really realized that. And I was 100%. See, there you go. Truman Show style. It's everywhere. They don't even live here. Um, so... They've expected me to come here. The idea is uh, persistence and consistency in what you do. You come to a certain area, you come there every day, every day, every day, for even if it's going to take two years. This is how you beat this. Because even if you don't come, come, come through, but then the truth will come out. They can't keep it, they can't keep it hidden. They can't for that long. There's only so many excuses you can come up with to tell certain doctors, certain employees why you can't come to this place anymore. You can give them vacations, you can do whatever you want. In the end, the more you move forward, as long as you don't let their so-called distractions and psychological warfare get to you and uh, drain you so you don't, so you end up giving up on the place because they're going to do the impossible to make you believe that psychologically that you're not doing the right thing when I mean, you're surrounded with it so that's all i wanted to tell you anyways i'm not going to talk too much and i exert too much energy i'm going to save it so anyways it's been a pretty good day i'm gonna go back to the emerge see if i can resolve my problem which is getting a referral to a real doctor. So they referred me from the eMERGE to the so-called eye clinic up there in ophthalmology in Sunnybrook Hospital. And the lady in <clears throat> the ophthalmology clinic, guys, there are no doctors there that go in and out. The security came threatened me today that I'm filming. I wasn't filming anything today inside the hospital. Because if I filmed that area, you'd realize that there, are, there are no doctors coming in and out to see the patients. They can masquerade uh, and put nurses there. They can masquerade and put patients. But they can't do it with doctors. You know? And if they do, I know their pictures, what they look like on the internet. The, the, the ophthalmologists that work at Sunnybrook Hospital. So they can't masquerade that. And if you're seen by one of them and he lies about who he is, that's illegal. That's how you can nail them then. Because this is an establishment. And this is what I get everywhere I go. It's not working anymore. It's funny. Because once you realize the actions of these people towards you, even the women, how could you even want to come close to women that do such a thing? It's, it's actually sickening in the stomach. I'm at this phase right now. You know, so this is it. This is the idea. It's to understand what's being done to you and comprehend the risks that they're taking on the outside that they're hiding from you behind the curtains and not showing them to you. And really knowing what you're doing and sticking to it no matter what. So... You have to select a certain area that you believe in, that you think this area could not be hidden forever. And you will stay there, and you will stay there, and you will stay there and go there every day because you have reasons to, too. You're not just showing up there. It's a hospital. I have a problem. I want to resolve it. And they're giving me the runaround from the emergency to the eye clinic upstairs. First, they send the wrong referral letter. Then they do this. Then they do that. So they're forcing me back in there every day. They don't even want to refer me to a real ophthalmologist. They tell me five months now. 
because they know once I see a real ophthalmologist and he does an exam on my eyes you will see microchips in there and it's over that's the truth and there is nothing they could do about that nothing 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 they could prevent those people from coming in here as long as they want in the end they will have to come in you cannot close this area forever so I'm at this point right now where I'm doing in terms of the irritations inside the prison that I'm in are not working at all it's zero I've, I've accomplished that why because I have a goal now because now I know what to do once you get a goal then none of the shit will get to you none I was just sitting in the emergency room right now they were going nuts in there, opening doors, shutting doors, pacing, kids crying, women bending over, you name it. Inside Sunnybrook, nothing. Just sitting there and smiling with my headphones on and reading the paper. Because I have a goal. Because now I know what to do to come out of this prison. I didn't before. So you see how violently the cars are coming by me. You know, I have a goal now. So they already threatened me about the phone because I uploaded a video yesterday for you guys about the people pacing inside the booth upstairs and downstairs. When I look that way, watch it from yesterday, Sunnybrook. But it doesn't really do anything anymore to me what they do. I know I have, because you have to you have to have a goal that will open up your your mind to the truth that you know once you reach that goal it's over then none of this will get to you anymore because in the end it wasn't this that drained you what drained you was cutting your hope off from the fact that you're gonna come out of this you, you don't even know that you're in a prison to begin with but now that I do it's done anyways I'm not gonna record here there's no point I'll be in touch